Hi, Kayla and Asher here, and I put together a short yoga sequence of five postures that will really help you to tap into your inner self and boost your mood. So follow me, and um, this will only take you know 10 minutes or so, and you can practice it whenever you feel like you need to lift your mood a little bit and get yourself smiling. is child's pose. It's a beautiful, simple posture that allows you to turn in, focus on the breath, and really get back in touch with your authentic self. Slow down the breathing, calm the mind, and start to allow that calm effect to take over the body. So the way you set up for it, you take toes together to touch behind you and knees wide. And then you sit back on your heels and drape your torso forward as you walk your fingers forward and allow your head to fall to the ground. As you breathe here, you want to allow your sit bones to sink down against your heel and start to focus the breath into the back body, filling up the back lungs. With every exhale, allow your heart to melt closer to the ground. Now I'm moving in and out of the posture so I can speak with you, but this is a really nice posture to go into to hold for a minute or two and allow the body to calm and settle. So that's pose number one, child's pose. The next posture I want to share with you is good old downward facing dog. Down dog is an inversion. So that means that our hips are higher than our head and it gets the blood flowing in a new way. Inversions are great because they literally turn your world upside down and give you a fresh perspective. So next time you're feeling a little off, if you can come into this posture and allow the body to settle and see your world in a new way, it definitely begins to brighten your mood. So let's move into it. Take your hands a little wider than shoulder distance, fingers pointing forward or slightly dialed out. Press down through your feet to lift your hips and begin to sink your ears between your biceps and allow your heels to melt towards the floor. If this is too intense in the hamstrings, you're welcome to keep your knees bent here and raise your sit bones up towards the sky. But eventually you want to begin to press down through the heel to lengthen out through the hamstrings as well. Root down through the base of the forefinger and the base of the thumb. Make sure your pants aren't peeling up. That'll affect your wrists and your shoulders. And settle in with the breath here. As you breathe, engage the low belly so that you feel some buoyancy up through the hips. And again, this is a really nice posture to hold for a period of time to allow the body to settle. So there you have it, that's down dog. The third pose I want to share with you is warrior two. All the warrior postures in yoga are very empowered standing poses. So it's a great thing to do to elevate your mood, to feel strong and empowered, and literally take up space in the world. So how you set up for this, you take a nice wide stance on your mat and turn your left toes forward. So your feet are perpendicular to one another, and you want your front heel to be aligned with your back arch. Then sink your front knee to 90 degrees, and make sure it's directly in line with the center of your front foot. Extend your arms out to the side and gaze over your front fingertips. Often we tell our students to cultivate a sense of fierceness here. Sometimes you need a little bit of fierceness to move through the world. Make sure shoulders are over hips and try to get your hips um, to square off forward so that they're in line, one behind the other, as you gaze over your front fingertips. And to make sure that the body's balanced out, we want to do this on both sides. So flip the feet, 
Make sure hips are in line and square. Track your front toe over the center of your front foot and extend the fingertips as you maybe sink a little deeper into that front knee, bringing it closer to 90 degrees. Again, this is a posture you can hold for quite a while, so take your time with it and allow it to reveal itself to you. If you feel some heat building in the thighs, that's totally a good thing. So that's warrior two. The fourth pose in our sequence today is bridge pose. Bridge pose is a gentle back bend, and it literally lifts up the heart. And at, since it's doing that physically, it also does that on an internal level as well, and lifts up the heart, makes us feel happier, healthier, and more joyous. So let's move into the posture. Lay down on your back. And reach forward with your fingertips, and they should, as a general rule of thumb, just be able to graze the back of your heels. To get length through the spine, inhale the arms up overhead. Then bring them by your sides and press down through the backs of the arms so much that you get a little lift behind your heart already. Then on an inhale, press through your feet to keep the energy in the quads to lift up. Now I'm turning my head to speak with you, but in this posture, you want to keep your gaze upward and really root down through the back of the head into the ground. Try to let go of any holding in the glutes. They should be soft here. And you have the option of taking your hands underneath and snuggling your shoulder blades together to lift your heart even more here. Keep pressing through the feet. And imagine that you're hugging a beach ball between your knees so the inner thighs are empowered. Breathe here. The breath is very important. And as you're ready, exhale, lower down. And it's nice to take a neutral pose before you move into any kind of spine curling motion. You might feel like you want to hug your knees in. But first, just take the feet wide, let the knees knock together and rest here. And then you can draw the knees in and drop up to sit. So that's bridge pose. The final pose in our sequence today is the final pose in every yoga class, and it's Shavasana, our final resting pose. To set up for Shavasana, you take your feet a little wider than hip distance and lay down on your back, letting the feet gently flop outwards. Take your arms about 6 to 12 inches from your sides with palms facing up. So it's a receptive pose. We're still being open here. But it's really nice to just let yourself go physically and mentally and feel fully supported. You can even let go of the breath here and just let it rise and fall naturally. Sometimes what can boost our mood the most is a sense of surrender. We let go of any holding in the body or in the mind and just settle in and calm ourselves. And Shavasana is a beautiful way to do that. I recommend taking Shavasana for at least three minutes, but ideally it's a nice posture to hold for even seven to ten minutes to let the body fully unwind. And as that's complete for you, you can rock up to sit. Move slowly and mindfully so that you take the best of your Shavasana with you. And while you're in Shavasana, make sure your eyes are closed, that your hands are relaxed so the fingers gently curl, and you just let the toes flop outward in a comfortable way. You want to be fully comfortable there. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for learning about these yoga postures, and I really hope you employ some or all of them to help you boost your mood next time you're in need of a little heart uplifting. Namaste.